Hello everyone and welcome back to Season 6 of the New York Jets franchise. The Jets are having definite problems this season. They've lost four games in a row and are faced with a game against the Denver Broncos that has the potential of breaking their season. The Jets need to win out the rest of their season to have a legitimate shot at the playoffs. But the Broncos are in the way and have a defense that has the potential to shut down the Jets and wreck their hopes of postseason play. We could see a defensive battle this evening as two top five defenses go at it. And with the troubles that New York's offense has been having lately, scoring on the Denver defense could be problematic. The strength of their defensive crew is in the middle of the field with Von Miller, Josie Jewell, and Bradley Chubb doing an outstanding job of disrupting both the pass and the run this season. Have the Jets done a good enough job of preparing for these Broncos? We'll tell if football under the lights of a Sunday night game can help or hinder their efforts tonight. To find out, Let's watch as the Jets try to corral the Broncos here on the Football Freaks Network. Isaac Crawford stands at his own goal line. And Daniel Carlson gets us underway here in the Mile High City. Crawford comes out and gets out to the 35, a short kick, and the Broncos are in business as they get a little bit further up the field. Teddy Bridgewater, 10 interceptions, 22 touchdowns on the season so far. And uh, get this, Andy Dalton is his backup. Something that I'd, I'd never think of myself as saying or hearing myself saying. And here is the offense of the Broncos. Philip Lindsay is a force to be reckoned with. And if the Jets are not careful, He'll be able to rack up a lot of points this evening. Third and eight. Bridgewater back to pass. Has all day long and finally finds Lindsay out of the backfield. And that doesn't go anywhere. And the Broncos have to punt. Now Sam Darnold, 12 interceptions, 18 touchdowns. He is trying to put a season together here. And let's see if he can do it tonight. And that one is complete over the middle to Chris Herndon. A six yard gain. Jackson up the left side numbers. He has the first down out to the 34. Jacobs now in there. Back to pass and dumped in the backfield is Darnold. Von Miller breaks through and makes the tackle back at the 25 yard line. So now Denver gets it back. Lindsey in the backfield, takes it up the middle, jukes around a little bit and gets out to the 43. There you see his numbers from last week. 16 rushes, 59 yards, and no touchdowns, which the Broncos are going to try and remedy tonight. And down goes Bridgewater. Marcus May gets him back at the 35 yard line, bringing up third and 12. Bridgewater back again to pass and can't get it away. Demarcus Faulkner taking him down at the 26 yard line and that brings up a punt by the Broncos. First and 10 at the 36. The throw goes over the middle and it's complete. Carl Arsenault catching it inside Bronco territory at the 42. Now the handoff delayed and Jackson is caught in the backfield. DJ Reader making the stop and Darnold goes down. Von Miller again. Third and 24. Back to pass. Darnold throws deep. He's got a man. John Ross. Touchdown Jets. You can see the speed of Ross just making a separation there at the end before he went into the end zone, and that was an easy catch. Seven to nothing now, and the Broncos need to answer. They're not 
going to do it that way. Lindsay is stopped in the backfield by Ja'Kai Polite. Second and 14, the throw is complete. Nelson Aguilar takes it to the 30-yard line. Now third and five. The pass over the middle is complete. Noah Fant has the first down out to the 42. Now after a false start penalty, Lindsey is on his way. Lorenzo Carter dives and misses and into the end zone. Touchdown, Denver. One big play answered with another big play. And Philip Lindsay takes it 58 yards to the house. Now 7-7. And the Jets trying to make a statement here. And Jackson gets the first down and out of bounds at the 38-yard line, bringing us to the end of quarter number one. And with that, let's go to Eurocat Baby for an update. The Jets have had a busy week preparing for this game and have seen some definite gains as a result of practice this week. Some of the players getting a boost start with the Jets' newfound return specialist, Nicole Hardman. He's received a physical category upgrade and gets hefty boosts to his release and short route running attributes. Next is New York's first round draft choice, rookie safety, Jerron Mason with awareness and zone coverage skills getting the biggest boosts. And the last upgrade this week was backup linebacker Elijah Lee. He earned a pass coverage upgrade in which zone coverage was the focus. It should be noted as well that New York signed backup veteran cornerback Perry Nickerson to a one-year extension for just over two and a quarter million dollars to play for the Jets next season. Thanks for that update, and it's good to know there'll be some solid depth at the second level of the defense. Jerron Mason is being mentored by Jamal Adams, so it's not surprising to see him gaining skill quickly, especially since he's been identified as a star player after having his development hidden coming out of the draft. Now on second and 10, two receivers in tight. Pitch going out to the right side. And Jackson is going, going and out of bounds finally at the 22 yard line, pushed out by Chris Harris. Now in second and 10, Jacobs takes it down to the 16. Third and four now. Jacobs again, and he can't get to the sticks. Only to the 14 yard line, and out will come Daniel Carlson. 31-yard field goal attempt is up and good. That gives the Jets a three-point advantage, 10 to seven, with seven minutes, seven and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter. Back to pass is Bridgewater. He completes it over the middle to second-year tight end out of Hawaii, Jacob Moore to the 36. Now Lindsey gets taken down for a one yard loss. Third and eight. Bridgewater back to pass, throws complete. Lindsey out of the backfield and he doesn't get, I don't think, to the line that he needed to get and no he didn't. Jordan Jenkins made the stop but after a Jets three and out, it's complete over the middle. Alexander Allen out of TCU takes it down to the 34. Lindsay in the backfield gets the pitch, headed right, makes a juke, and he is gone, folks. Touchdown, Denver. Lindsay ends up making a juke at the line, faking out Avery Williamson right there, and then it's all the way into the end zone. A beautiful block by Nelson Aguilar, and there was nothing between him and the end zone. Now from the 23, Darnold throws complete to Ross. He's got speed, and he is gone. Touchdown, New York. Darnold had the protection, 
and just waited for Ross to get open. And my goodness, he was so far wide open. Nobody was within probably about three, four yards of him. And all the way to the end zone he goes. 17 to 14. The Jets take the lead. And on a pass out to Cortland Sutton, he gets into Jet territory at the 46, bringing us to the two-minute warning with the Jets on top by three. Now, Bridgewater throws over the middle, complete to Allen, and he's down to the 28. Denver on the move. Bridgewater back again, he has all day to throw the ball and finally finds more out of the backfield and down to the 20 yard line. Second and two. Another pass, and this one's intercepted. Brian Poole is going the other way, and it looks like nobody's going to be able to catch him. Touchdown, Jets. His third interception of the season, and if you look at that on the replay, it almost looks like he baited Bridgewater into throwing that pass because he undercut that route quite easily and it was all the way to the end zone now can denver utilize 59 seconds to put points on the board and that one is almost intercepted as well by robert ramirez second and ten the pass is a screen to lindsey and he is tackled out at the 30 yard line third and five Bridgewater throws complete Bridgewater. Oh my goodness. Lindsay just overpowered a charging Jerron Mason. This time the pass goes out to Moore and he is tackled inbounds. Oh, a timeout has to be taken. 10 seconds left on the clock. The throw deep and it's incomplete. And that will take us into halftime. Your score. 24-14 Jets. This is without a doubt unexpected. The Jets have scored 24 points in the opening half of this game, bettering their full game point total for a few weeks now. So far it's been the passing game and big plays from the Jets versus Philip Lindsay and a massive running game from the Broncos. Can this continue or will we actually see the defenses in this game? Stay tuned to find out because we'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back everyone to Denver's Empower Field at Mile High. Currently, New York has a 10 point advantage over Denver but are we going to see a repeat of last week? The Jets had a 10-point advantage then as well and ended up losing to Washington by a point. Can New York hold on to the lead this week? Let's find out as we watch the second half. The Jets on second and nine from the 26. Jackson in the backfield all alone, gets the pitch and out to the right-hand side and has the first down, makes a juke, and is out to the 47. A 21-yard gain and oh, so close to midfield. Jacobs takes it to the left side and forced out of bounds at the 47 of the Broncos. Second and four, the pass to Ross, he has it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. A 47 yard pass play and Ross is just absolutely burning up this field tonight. It seems like all he's doing is catching touchdowns, which isn't a bad thing for the Jets, but wow, what a night. Four plays, 75 yards, capped off by that 47-yarder to John Ross. The score is 31-14, and Denver has some work to do. Lindsey in the backfield. Bridgewater 
Gives it off up the middle and Lindsay gets a few. A four yard gain, second and six. Again, they go to the middle and Lindsay finds room and it's to the 20, 10, touchdown. Lorenzo Carter cannot catch him. And Lindsay is just shredding this defense that has been primarily known as a de rushing defense. And now from the 25, Darnold and company, 31-21, and they have to make another run. And that is an excellent start out to the 40-yard line for Ross. And Jackson takes it to the right. A nine-yard pickup to the 49. Wesco chugs up the middle and a first down to the 43-yard line of the Broncos. Second and seven, Jackson gets the first down and out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Pushed out by Taylor Rapp. Darnold throws. This time to Arsenal, first down, and he takes it down to the six. First and goal, and the Jets look unstoppable right now, and that one is another touchdown to John Ross. That makes four on the evening and bumps the score to 38 to 21, and this is Fast, getting out of control. Denver, Lindsey, up the middle to the 31-yard line. The Broncos needing one yard, and the wide receiver screen is sniffed out by Robert Ramirez, and there's a loss of two yards on the play. The Broncos have to kick. Now to the shotgun. From the 39, Darnold back to pass, has all day, decides to start running it, and that was amazing. Sam Darnold actually slid. He only gained two yards, but hey, oh, now he gets dumped in the backfield. I'm just kind of more impressed that he actually slid with the ball instead of trying to run over somebody. And that one is a first down to Jordan Thomas at the end of the third quarter. The Jets take a three-score lead into the fourth. Second and seven. Darnold on the run again, and he completes this one out to Carl Arsenault to the 21. The Jets now on the edge of the red zone. Darnold back to pass, throws this one complete. And that is Valdez Scantling from the 12 now. Darnold back pedals, throws complete. Arsenal touchdown. His first receiving score of the evening, which extends the Jets' lead by yet another touchdown. 45 to 21 is your score now. And the Jets are playing deep in the backfield. And Moore takes that for a 10 yard gain and out of bounds. Bridgewater back again. Throws and it's incomplete. Or is that? No, it's incomplete. Cortland Sutton couldn't get his feet down. Bridgewater back again, and the Jets are giving him an awful lot of time to find receivers. And that time he found Sutton for the first down. And Sam Hubbard, not happy after an injury, takes him out of the game. Second and 20. Bridgewater loads up and throws into the end zone. It's incomplete. Again, now I have a feeling... That was an outstanding catch by Sutton. Down to the 26. After another holding call, Bridgewater throws it into the end zone and it's intercepted. Perry Nickerson jumping in front of Sutton and picking that ball off avoids Denver putting another score on the board. But after another jet three and out, the 
Broncos have it again at the 34 yard line. Bridgewater back to pass. Oh, I cannot believe the time that he has in the backfield. That one complete out to Noah Fant. 2.35 left in the game. And this one's complete across the middle short to Allen. Bringing up second and short. And I think this is going to be passing all the way for Denver now. And Fant makes that reception down to the 14. And that brings us to the two-minute warning. The pass into the end zone is broken up by Brian Poole. And here is where you can tell that the Broncos have conceded defeat. Jeffries comes out, kicks the field goal, and it's 45-24. But then again, they are kicking an onside kick. And the kick is on its way, recovered by Arsenault at the 44-yard line. A couple of first downs, and this one should be over. Third and 10, 26 seconds left, 25, and Jackson. Finds a hole, 10-5, touchdown, Jets. That one was not expected at all, but 44 yards later, Jackson is in the end zone, and it's a missed extra point. So it's 51-24. to 24. Denver is not done. Nelson Aguilar sheds some tackles, is running down the sideline now and tackled. At the 19-yard line, pass into the end zone, Sutton, touchdown, Denver. Kind of meaningless uh, other than padding some stats. This one, Nickerson loses the battle on, and Sutton comes down with the touchdown grab. But with three seconds left, that will end the game. Denver not being able to come up with a win at home. Losing 51 to 31. This was a completely unexpected game. Especially considering that we were dealing with two of the top defenses in the league. With a total 82 points scored, this looks like more of a college football score than a game in the NFL. From looking at the game stats, I noticed that both teams had 560 total yards in the game. Each team took a little different approach to getting there, but it seems like that statistically these were two very well-matched opponents. It's just that the Jets' defense seemed to come through a little better when a Denver score was imminent. A pick six from the 20 yard line and an interception in the end zone. If it weren't for both of those turnovers, we may well have seen a different ball game here. From an offensive perspective, Denver's true weapon was Philip Lindsay in the running game and Sam Donald had his first perfect passer rating game of his career. I'm not sure how he did that, but five aerial touchdowns and 325 yards later, he ended the game with an 84% completion rate and a perfect 158.3 for the record books. Touchdown Teddy had the passing yards, but that was about it. Those two interceptions really put a stop to him having a good night in the passing department. Ross was Darnold's preferred target, and by his stats, you can see why. Six receptions for just over 200 yards, and four of those catches were for TDs. Defensively, aside from both teams allowing yards like it was an all-you-can-eat buffet, they performed fairly even in this game. It was really those two interceptions that were the difference. A couple of upgrades come as a result of this game. Left end Leonard Williams got a power rusher upgrade and the biggest boost to his acceleration. Kind of strange, power rusher has the best boost in acceleration? <laughs> huh. 
And backup center Kevin Lawrence gets an agile upgrade with pass blocking being the focus there. Since the Bills had an eight point victory over the Giants on Thursday night, uh, with this win, the Jets remain a game back and because the Dolphins got pummeled by the Patriots, New York is now moving back up the division, now in second place. Remember that New York holds the tiebreaker via winning both games here in the regular season, so if the Jets can pull even by the end of the season, they will win the division. The Jets should have a legitimate chance for a win since next they will be on the road in SoFi Stadium to play the 4-8 and eight Chargers. Joey Bosa is injured and out for the rest of the season for L.A., and that's a big part of their defense gone. Along with that, trying to rebuild at the quarterback position has been problematic at best. Randall Wyatt out of K-State is having a tough season, and the Jets' defense isn't looking to make it any easier. Their offensive line seems to be pretty good, and I think it'll be very interesting to see how the New York D-line will be able to operate. If Wyatt can be pressured, it might make all the difference in the world for this game. Now that's going to do it for this week's episode of the New York Jets franchise here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and remember to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications of new videos as they come out. The Jets, behind the outstanding play of Sam Darnold, <laughs> yeah, I said Sam Darnold, gave the Broncos more than what they could handle. I think the bigger issue and the question being, <laughs> can he continue this outstanding play for the rest of the season? Justin Jackson made a real dent in the Denver defense this week with over 120 yards on the ground himself. Will he be able to keep that kind of production up as well? To find out, be with us as the Jets travel to L.A. to take on the Chargers from SoFi Stadium. And until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now. And have a good day, everyone.